Do you find that you always paint in the same style and you'd really like to try and change it up? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how one simple technique and a simple tool can really help you try and change that style, hopefully for the better. Coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design. And today we're gonna to look at how to really try and loosen up your style of painting by using a simple tool, one of my favorite tools, a simple sponge. Now in this painting, I'm actually gonna try and achieve that, maybe not the whole painting because of course it's difficult to do fine detail, but as much of the painting as I possibly can, but simply using this natural sponge here. The beauty of things like this is it actually really enables you to produce quality techniques that you might not necessarily go to if you're just using a fine detail brush because I used to be a real perfectionist so I find that using techniques like this really helps to loosen up my style. So let's see how we get on today's painting. Here we go. So I've actually pre-primed the canvas this time in black. Um, you'll notice there's a slight mark in the middle that's because I like to reuse a lot of my canvases but the reason I've gone with black today guys is that the main colour behind this is obviously going to be very dark so it's always worthwhile to actually consider what the overall colour is before you then go and prime it with a straight white so we're going to be working straight onto the black to really create that mystique atmosphere brushes wise I'm not actually using traditional brushes other than the fine details so I've just gone with the sponge brush and an actual sponge which has got larger gaps in it and then we're simply just going to load up the paint trace onto the sponge and then we're going to start working it through. I'm a huge fan of using sponge to paint with just because of the type of textures you can actually get. So here obviously you can do a combination of both dabbing and just I quite like the circle technique as well. So I'm really just working around uh, like some of the misty edge of the river and the trees right now. And of course you have to remember when you're working with, with a black background, you don't want to be painting the whole of the canvas. You want to leave the darkest areas with that black. So I'm just gonna dab on some texture. So it's a really nice technique, particularly when you're doing something like this, which is really misty. You just want to sort of build lots of combinations of those blues and whites to create more, more of a tonal texture. So straight on with the, the river at the front. It seems quite white to start with, but it will not be that harsh in a moment because I'm just going to tone this down as well. Now what I don't want to have with this painting is really any harsh lines because it is a very misty morning uh, painting. So I'm going to try and remove those harsh lines straight away just by blending it in with the big sponge. And of course with using sponges, you're limited to how much detail you can actually achieve which you have to use to your advantage. You know, if I had lots of hard lines on this, I'm not gonna get that misty effect. Now the area in the middle here is actually where the, uh, the moonlight or the sun, I suppose it's gonna be sunshine, isn't it, in the morning, is actually gonna be reflecting, so you're gonna get much, uh, you're gonna like a lighter, distinct area in the middle. So I'm just gonna make sure that there's a focal point which is quite white. And then you'll notice I'm leaving these sides black because that's where my main tree features are going to go. Colours wise, I've literally gone as basic as possible. I've just gone with the two blues, so the warm and the cool blue, white and the black. So really, really simple, basic composition. So again, using that scrubbing technique, certainly in the corners, I want the tops of this painting to be quite dark, just to give it more of a nice compositional feel too. The other thing you'll notice with using the sponge here, guys, is I'm not using water. Um, water, generally with acrylic, if you use too much water to loosen it down, you actually lose the quality of the pigment. So you want to be really careful about when you're using brushes of using water onto there because you're actually going to get more of a translucent feel, which is fine if you're doing watercolours, but with acrylic paints you want to have that gorgeous strong colour coming through. So you can see there where I've done the actual focal points of the sunshine, so that's going to be the lightest part of the painting. And I just want to get more of that directional feel to the water at the front, I'm just working lots of horizontal lines across the painting. 
Now this is where obviously the main foliage is going to be, so I'm just working a little bit more of that black because I've actually lost some of that a little bit of detail where you're going to get the trees coming through. So I'm just almost adding the black back into the painting. I'm just going to tone down this front bit, so again just with a little hint of that black still on my sponge, I've just added a bit more of the, the cooler blue to it now. Just want to really try and tone those areas down. So I want to keep it nice and light in the middle where you've obviously got the reflection, but I just want to make a little bit more subtlety with the marks on the, on the side of the water. But the key here with water, especially in reflections, is it needs to be very linear. So I'm doing lots of horizontal lines here. And again, remember, this is just purely with the sponge at this stage. I'm going to use a fine detail brush towards the end, but I'm going to see how much of this painting I can actually do with the sponge. It's a little bit more dark, just lost some of that detail at the top. So sort of mixing in a darker blue now just to blend those colours in. It's all about texture with these paintings as well. You really want to build up layers. You know, you're sort of literally working with your layers going from the background to the foreground. Now I've gone with the sponge brush, I'm just going to work some of that foreground detail with the tree. So this is purely with the black now, so I want it to be quite a contrast. The great thing with sponge brushes is they're wonderful for doing trees with, because as you push the actual brush harder, you're going to go thicker with the lines. So you really want to go quite subtle with the outer lines. With any tree painting, you always get thicker towards the centre of the, of the trunk. working a few more little detail branches. In a moment I need to work on with the uh, fine detail brush because you're obviously a little bit limited in terms of how thin you can make the lines with the sponge brush, but it's a fantastic tool for doing the basic shape of a tree. One of the most basic areas people make errors while other people make with the sponge brushes is they keep their lines too straight. You really want to be working those kinks. You know, trees are, there's no rules, but you don't want to have just straight lines. That's when they look unrealistic. Now I'm still using the sponge brush here and I'm just going to get a bit more detail now with the, the river at the front. So I want to get some of those reflective lines. So I'm just blending some of that white across, keeping those horizontal lines again for the reflection. Fan brushes guys are so fantastic for doing foliage with. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. This can only really be achieved with uh, a fan brush. So they're brilliant for doing tops of trees or any grasses or hair, just because of the way the actual brushes work with the individual individual strokes, you get really gorgeous textures with this. And now I'm just going with a basic round head brush. This is what we call a dry brush technique. If you've watched a lot of my videos, I'll show you how to do this technique on a, on a tree painting that I've recently done, but it's all about minimal pigment so that when you dab it on, you get almost those individual little leaves coming through. It's a really quick, simple way of doing a tree painting. And then just gonna finish off with some little fine detail branches using that fine, fine detail brush I was talking about earlier. Very, very subtle, very light 
with the touch here because you don't want to have too harsh a line. And there you have it. So there you have it guys, hope you've enjoyed today's video on how to really change up your style, perhaps if you're more of a, a perfectionist, by just simply using a sponge like this to really try and generate more of an atmosphere to your painting. If you have enjoyed the video, then please do hit that like button just below guys, as it really does help our channel. And if you'd like to see some more weekly top tips just like this one, or simple techniques and tips to really improve your painting, then do hit that subscription button and notification bell just below because we do do weekly videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Alrighty guys, we'll see you next time. Happy painting.